1st of May, come up with the sheep just where you've been, head into the top of the hill there, and all the way up, there's a skylight going up in front of you. It's fantastic. Uh, you're standing on the lower slopes of uh, Holnmoor, our farm just over the hill, uh, just at the bottom of the hill there, uh, with my wife and two children and my mum. Uh, yeah, we've got a small hill farm, keep uh, South Devon Galloway cows, uh, Swaledale sheep. Yeah, this is Holmore. Uh, from here to the skyline and round. Uh, yeah, nice common. You've got high hill behind with blanket bog, right down to the Valley Myers. My mum's family have uh, farmed in Home Parish for a long, long time, since like the 1600s, I think. But my dad is not from farming background. Uh, we live on a small farm, we own uh, about 50, 60 acres, and then we rent sort of 80, 80, 100 acres as well, uh, and uh, base our farm there and use the common land, use Holmmoor, the forest of Dartmoor, um, with the sheep and the cattle. Every acre you either own or uh, control has a specific number of rights attached with it. That means how many sheep or cows or ponies can go up. So it's controlled, basically. And each farm would traditionally, as you turn round, there would be six, seven farms pottering along. They'd all turn their stock up for the summer, rest their in-by ground uh, to grow uh, hay, mostly hay. It's now silage and hay. Um, because obviously if you've got stock on an upland place where the climate's not great, you can't grow your hay and your silage and keep the sheep on the same piece of ground. So they come up onto the hill, a bit like they do in the Alps, send them up to the mountains, up into the hills, give the farms a rest. And that's what we do. And it's still, and it's a really traditional thing. I mean, it's nearly a thousand years old. Um, you know, it's, it's really, really old. It's obviously changed and it's under pressure now with farms getting bigger or new owners. But at the moment, it's still holding on. We've still got six, seven people grazing on Holmmoor, which is pretty precious. I like the fact Holmmoor's got big five lots of South Devon cattle, separate herds, because they are the traditional cow here. It's not always straightforward, because one thing knocks onto another. So if you try and change one thing, it's bound to have an effect on something else. So if the bracken, if you looked over there, is thickening up and, it, and goes to thatch, what we call, so the grass dies underneath, You've lost area, so the sheep would move to somewhere else. And then they'd overgraze that bit. If you don't burn an area, then the sheep only concentrate on a little green bit in the middle. They overgraze that. So you get undergrazed, overgrazed. It all goes wrong. So what you've got to keep is the traditional balance of grazing, light grazing, moving it around the common. And that way you keep an open, an open habitat. I mean, you're standing right in a burial cairn here. This is 4,000 years ago, some chief was buried right where you're sitting I think um, and it was a fantastic spot because you can see 50 miles and in all directions and yes we've got to move with the times so there's going to be habitats that have got to be protected and managed and you know we're talking about scrubbing up some of the valleys the, the, the blanket bogs on the top they've got to be managed sensitively the valley mires we've got to get a few more trees in the valley but we've also got to protect the top of these hills and keep them grazed because that's where the animals live to go and manage those other habitats and it's um if you change one thing you, it has a knock-on effect and it's got to be thought out and i think the commoners who've been here for a long time will realize that they've got to move with the times but <laughs> they've got to be respected as well because they've done the generations and they've done what's needed really well in every decision you make in life and whatever it is if you can pretend your granddad's looking over your shoulder here tutting about what you're doing and your child's you know in your ear here thinking i'm going to take that on one day the decision you make today i'm going to live with i think that guides you in a, a really good direction you remember granddad there and your child there uh, and that, in life, really, everything you do, if you think of the traditions and the hard work that was put in from the previous generation, and then the children who've got to face the challenges of the, the future, but will live off the mistakes you made. The middle ground is the right place because you are conscientious and you listen to argument. You can accept something from one side and something from the other. It allows you to adjust, it allows you to hedge your bets in life you know there's the climate change but we might find that 
by going in extreme climate, uh, you know, looking after the climate by planting trees everywhere, we would import meat from the other side of the world and actually make things worse. And at the same time, if we treat, you know, agriculture as a, a kind of scientific lab, we're going to wreck biodiversity. The middle ground where the pressure, it's about taking the pressure off nature, working with nature, is the best of both worlds. And as long as you, you've got to be passionate and say that and defend that middle ground, and it's a win-win. Win-win. All right? Well, I don't know how to describe it really. I feel it is like my country. I feel like the little skylark that comes back here every year and nests, and this is where he lives. Um, and other people are guests. It's wonderful that people can come and enjoy it. But they've got to, they're entering my world, and I have to live by some of their rules, but they need to respect our world as well. And... Uh, it gives you a sense of belonging. Even on a bad day, you can come up. And I said about seeing the grouse, didn't I? On the top of the hill there, there's grouse still. Not many on southern Dartmoor, but there's some there. And I'll come out and I'll see them every year. And they'll flick up in front of me and soar away. And I'll say, you've made another year and so have I. And it's really, really nice. It's really nice. And it keeps you going.